Shabbat Shalom, family Messiah Yeshua. Shabbat Shalom to the worldwide YouTube and social media community. This is your beloved brother Shaul Yisrael coming back again with another Yahweh inspired message. I'll be reading from the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 3. Again, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 3 and I read, For this is the will of Yahweh, even your separation unto Yahweh. They shall abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in separation unto Yahweh and in honor of Yahweh. Not in the lesser concubinages, even as the Gentiles would know not Yahweh. I read that to say this, under no circumstances or no situation are single men and single women who serve Yahweh to commit fornication. Remember, fornication is sexual intercourse outside of marriage. The definition of fornication is is the engagement of sexual intercourse outside of the boundary or the confines of marriage for sexual intercourse is reserved exclusively for husband and wife in order for a man and woman to engage in sexual intercourse they must be married. They must enter into a union of one man and one woman. Sex, so sexual intercourse outside of the union of one man and one woman is a transgression of Yahweh's law. So under no circumstances or situation is a single man and single woman who serve Yahweh to commit fornication. For fornication is a sin before Yahweh. That's the natural side of fornication. Then there's the spiritual side of fornication. As is written in the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, in verse 12. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, and verse 12. Again, wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, and verse 12. And I read, For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication, and the invention of them the corruption of life. The, the, just as the natural side is the unlawful joining to between a man and woman. When a man and woman unlawfully joins themselves to one another outside the confines of marriage with this fornication there is a transgression against Yahweh when either a man or woman illegally criminally joins themselves with another mighty one that they have created from their own wicked and perverted imagination that is spiritual fornication. Because you have joined yourself to another mighty one. When there's no other mighty one. Because Abba Yahweh is the exclusive, the solitary, and only mighty one in existence. So when you create a mighty one and you join yourself with that mighty one 
you have committed spiritual fornication. And that is a criminal act against Yahweh. There is a transgression of Yahweh's law. And if you do not repent of natural or spiritual fornication, you become in danger of hell, fire, and brimstone. For fornication is a transgression of Yahweh's law. It is unlawful for a single man and single woman to engage in sexual intercourse. So, the only remedy to avoid natural fornication is for man and woman who are single to remain celibate either until they marry or remain celibate for life. For marriage is a calling. Just as celibacy is a calling and is Yahweh's will even reconciliation to Yahweh for one not to engage in fornication for one not to engage in the worship of idols to engage in the worship of another mighty one as is written in Exodus chapter 20 you shall have no other Elohim before Yahweh for our Yahweh is the one and only and exclusive mighty one in creation this is Yahweh's creation. He is the exclusive creator of all things. No other. And to worship another mighty one is idolatry, is spiritual fornication. Not just spiritual fornication, is spiritual adultery. Why? Because adultery is when you're unfaithful to Yahweh. When a husband and wife is unfaithful to one another by joining themselves to another man, another woman, they engage in adultery. So when you join yourself to another mighty one or mighty ones, you engage in spiritual adultery. You commit unfaithfulness to Yahweh, but you're supposed to be one with Yahweh when you're born of Yahweh. So remember, fornication is the unlawful joining of a man and woman. When a single man and single woman unlawfully join themselves to one another, they enter into such an ill course outside the confines of marriage. Sexual intercourse outside the boundary and confines of marriage is illegal sexual activity. It is called fornication. And fornication is a transgression of Yahweh's law. Sex is not marriage. Sex is not marriage. Marriage is the union of one man and one woman. In order for there be, in order for there to be a marriage, there must be the vow before Yahweh to join that one man and one woman to one the other, and there must be the marital covenant or the marital license that bear witness to the vow between one man and one woman to enter into union with one the other. So sexual intercourse outside marriage is a transgression of Yahweh's law. There's the spiritual side of fornication and adultery. When you're unfaithful to Yahweh, 
you commit spiritual adultery and you're unfaithful to Yahweh when you live in transgression of Yahweh's word after you have been born again according to Acts 38 you're unfaithful to Yahweh when you transgress Yahweh's law you live an unfaithfulness unto Yahweh you are worshipping of the mighty ones you are worshipping of the Elohim besides the one and true Elohim Yahweh when you bow down before the altar of transgression of Yahweh's law you are committing spiritual fornication Remember the devising of idols is the beginning of spiritual fornication. And when you invent another mighty one, you have corrupted your own life. If your one of Yahweh is your sole obligation to worship and bow before the altar of Yahweh alone. You're not to bow before no other altar, no other Elohim, for there is no other Elohim. Abba Yahweh alone and exclusively is the one true and exclusive and solitary El, or mighty one of all creation. And we are to bow before Abba Yahweh, you lift up our hearts and our soul and our strength unto Abba Yahweh alone so reject fornication for those who commit fornication you are on the road to eternal damnation eternal destruction for it's written in Revelation chapter 21 In verse 8, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in a lake with birds, with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now turn to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are revealed. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, immolation, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, Revelings and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told time past, that they would do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Remember, sex is not marriage. Sex is not marriage. Marriage, by definition, according to the scripture, is the union of a single man and a single woman. It's the vow to enter into that union of of man and woman that is born witness to by the marital covenants and the marital license. Those who teach the sexist merit, you teach a damn lie. You teach falsehood. You are blaspheming your creator of a Yahweh. Cease and stop this damnable teaching that sex is marriage. I don't care who you are, I don't care what camp and what group and assembly you preside over, I don't care how long your camp, your assembly, your group has been existing, if you continue to teach the damnable lie that sex is married, then you are not only a certified false prophet, but you have reserved and punched your ticket for the lake of fire with birds of fire and brimstone, and you're justifying fornication. 
for fornication is the unlawful union of man and woman. For in order for the union, for in order for the joining of man and woman to be lawful, it must be done within the confines, the boundary of marriage. For sexual intercourse is exclusively reserved for husband and wife. Only the husband and wife can lawfully engage in sexual intercourse. A single man and single woman cannot engage in sexual intercourse. A single man and single woman cannot engage in sexual intercourse. If a single man and single woman engages in sexual intercourse, it is a sin. It is a transgression against Yahweh. What they call a single man and single woman must remain celibate. They must abstain from fornication. They must abstain from the unlawful joining of man and woman outside of marriage. So fornicators, adulterers, you must repent. And remember, husband and wife is bound for life. As it's written in Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. And verse 2. Verse 1. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law have dominion over man as long as he lives. For the woman which has an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he lives. But if the husband be dead, she is free from that law. So then if, while her husband lives, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is loose from that law. So she is no adult though she be married to another man. So man and woman who enters into the union of a man and woman is bound for life. Divorce was something that man gave an allowance for. Because the hardness of man's heart. So if you engage. If a husband and wife engage in divorce. They show that they are stubborn. And rebellious of heart. For the law of marriage. Is not broken. Unless. One spouse dies. Marriage is for life. As is written in Matthew chapter 19. And verse. Four. Matthew 19 verse 4. And Yeshua answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he was made them at the beginning, made them male and female, and said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh? Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore Yahweh has joined together, let not man put asunder. They say unto Yeshua, Why did Moses then command us to give a writing divorcement and to pull her away. He said unto them, Moses, because the hardness of your hearts suffer you to pull away your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. 
So divorce as sanctioned by Moses was done so because the hardness of man's heart. So divorce is not sanctioned of Yahweh. It's not authorized of Yahweh. Remember, divorce is not sanctioned of Yahweh. Marriage is for life. In order for a husband and wife to remarry, their spouse must physically die. If a husband leaves his wife and remarries another woman, he has engaged in adultery. If a wife leaves her husband and remarries another man, she has engaged in adultery. And adultery is a sin. Adultery is unfaithful against your spouse. Those engaged in adultery, you have placed yourself under condemnation, under the sentence of damnation. Remember, Marriage is for life. Divorce is something that those who are hard hearted and stubborn and rebellious before Yahweh. For the law of marriage is for life. The law of marriage, it cannot be broken by man. The law of marriage is binding what's entered into. Once, you ent once a single man and single woman enters into the covenant of marriage, is binding for life. Only physical death can end the covenant of marriage. Only physical death. So, if you left your first companion, brother, one sister, you left your first companion and got married to a second, third, fourth, and fifth companion, you are an adultery and you're living in whoredom. As long as your first companion still lives, you are living in whoredom and you are a transgressor and a, a serial transgressor of Yahweh's law and you're under the sentence of damnation. After you hear this message of truth and you continue to live in that unlawful marriage or marriages, you are willfully engaged in adultery and you are blaspheming willfully. It's time for you to repent. Repent of adultery. Repent of fornication. Turn from those unlawful marriages. By divorcing those unlawful companions and either going back to your first companion or remaining celibate. Those are the two options. You either go back to your first companion or remain celibate for life. Go back to your first companion. First, divorce those unlawful companions or go and go back to your first companion or remain celibate for as long uh, as you are engaged in those unlawful marriages you are under the sentence of damnation for marriage or rather the law of marriage is binding forever. It cannot be broken by man. Only physical death can end the covenant of marriage. And remember, fornication is the engaging of single man and wo woman 
outside the boundary and confines of marriage. Sexual intercourse is reserved exclusively for husband and wife. No single man, no single woman can engage in sexual intercourse. If a single woman and single man engage in sexual intercourse, it is called fornication. It is a transgression of Yahweh's law. If two men engage in sexual intercourse with one the other, that is an abomination. That is strange, unusual, and perverted affection. If two women engage in sexual intercourse, that is an abomination. That is perversion. And they abide under the sentence of death. Even the sentence of damnation. From the law of marriage is reserved for the union of one man and one woman. The law of marriage is reserved for one biological man and one biological woman. The law of marriage is not reserved for two men. The law of marriage is not reserved for two women. So if uh, two women seek to enter into the covenant of marriage or the law of marriage, it is fraudulent. If two women seek to engage in the law of marriage, it is fraudulent. It is perversion before Yahweh. If two men seek to enter into the covenant of marriage, it is perversion. So, the law of Yahweh is the highest and the eternal law of creation. All laws of men must conform to the eternal law of Yahweh. Any law of man that contradicts the law of Yahweh it is fraudulent. It is perversion. It is a transgression of Yahweh's law. And that nation or nations that lives and practices fraudulent and transgressive laws will be placed under Yahweh's judgment. Even Yahweh's damnation. So repent. Of fornication. Repent of adultery. Lest. You end up. Eternally damned. For in order to be one with Yahweh. You not only must be born again. As is written in Acts 2.38. But you must live. You must live a sinless life. To live a sinless life. Is to live a life. In full and total submission. To the law of Yahweh. Where is a sinless life? As Yeshua HaMashiach demonstrated and showed us. In a life that lived in full and total submission to the word of Yahweh. When you live in total and absolute submission to the word of Yahweh, you're living a sinless life. This is a sinless life. It's to live in submission to the will of Yahweh.
In order to live a sinless life, you must live in submission, absolute submission to the will of Yahweh. And the will of Yahweh is the word of Yahweh. In order to live a sinless life, you must sacrifice and reject your will and you must receive the will of Yahweh. For in order to inherit the kingdom of Yahweh to come, in order to make that first resurrection, you must live a sinless life. You must be totally and absolutely subject to the will of Yahweh for no sinner, for no transgressor, for no rebel against Yahweh will have fellowship and harmony and oneness with Yahweh. So you must repent of your sins. You must em express Self-part sorrow for transgression of Yahweh's word. You must express true remorse and regret and guilt for wrong action, for wrong speech, and for wrong dress and turn even of men, wrong speech and wrong dress and wrong action. A must be baptized in water in the blessed name of Jesus Christ they may receive the pardon of sin and the quickening of your dead nature and you must receive that blessed baptism of the Holy Spirit as initially evident by speaking in another tongue as Yahweh permits you to speak in order to please Yahweh, you must live a sinless life. And a sinless life is a life submitted to the word of Yahweh. If you're not submitted to Yahweh's word, and if you're not growing in submission unto Yahweh's will, you will not inherit Yahweh's kingdom. For no rebel For no stubborn one, no defiant one against Yahweh's will shall inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Those who are rebels and those who are defiant and those who are in opposition to the will of Yahweh are reserved for the lake of fire with burns with fire and brimstone. So you must repent. You must repent of your self-will. You must express self-part sorrow for being a rebel and self-willed. And you must place your faith in Yeshua HaMashiach by taking on His name and word of baptism and receiving the blessed baptism of the Holy Spirit as initially evident by speaking in another tongue as Yahweh permits one to speak and you must walk as Yeshua walked. Yeshua walked and lived a sinless life. He lived in total conformity, total harmony, and total oneness to the will of Yahweh. You must live a sinless life. You must live a sinless life. You must live in total and absolute submission and subjection to the will of Yahweh, which is the word of Yahweh. Your entire life must evolve around the word of Yahweh. O oh, Yahweh, in the name of your beloved Son, Yeshua HaMashiach, 
I thank you for granting you serving the unction and the direction and the shalom to speak forth your word of truth. I beseech you that whosoever will, whosoever you have chosen before the foundation of Shamaim and Aretz, that you draw them, that you open their heart to be pricked by your eternal word that may show forth sour part sorrow and that they may submit unto your eternal word. I beseech you that upon hearing your eternal word that you will ignite faith in their heart that they may receive your cell part spirit even your Ruach HaKodesh and that they may be compelled to learn of you and to progress in submission unto your will O oh, Yahweh, continue to grant us your elect one's wisdom and strength and healing mercies, O oh, Yahweh. Continue to fight and to contend against our enemies, O oh, Yahweh. Even contend and fight against my enemies located here in Person County in Rockford, North Carolina. Continue to sin upon them. Your grievous, great, and perpetual curses, plagues, torments, and terrors. Thank you for keeping your servant, for guarding your servant for every evil work and work of darkness. I give your name, O Yahweh, glory, honor, and praise. So be it. So be it. Remember family. Please show your support. By sending a donation. Either to my cash app. Or PayPal. Or send a donation to Western Union. Or MoneyGram. The information will be in the description. As Abba Yahweh has so moved and compelled and directed your heart, please send a donation. For it's the obligation of the family of Yahweh to support the ministry of Yahweh. May Yahweh grant you a blessed Shabbat, a refreshing And wisdom filled Shabbat. Love your family. 